the world of YouTube, my G here. Make sure this thing's on. So, for all the London people out there that are watching, and who I did ask about, and of course, this is Mr. A Dummies AD's um, stream of his analyst of Marilyn Monroe's death. And it goes on to say, you know, was she snuffed out? And the only reason why I asked this, and I did ask the comment of, does London still use the term, yeah, I do know what snuffed out means, you know, murder. But do they still use the term today instead of, oh, murder, the case of murder? I mean, like, modern time. Because yeah, I remember hearing this when I was a kid. Oh, you were snuffed out, you know. I did hear about this. I do know about it. It was just that, yeah, it's an old word. And due to the facts that bring this up, is because I used to, um, due to a book I read in prison when I was in jail in 2002, there was a book I was reading and I, there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. So fortunately, I was able to get in a 1932 dictionary. And with that is because I went into a lighter security, um, you know, prison. It was like living in a, um, I want to say in a rehab center. And I could get out and go out and do things. And get stuff brought in. So I had this dictionary brought in. And I actually wrote a short story. I believe it was called Life is Good. Way back in the beginning of my, beginning of my um, start on YouTube. If anybody wants to check it out. It's a short horror story I wrote. But what this leads to is that, right, words that are not used no more. And I know snuffed is an old word. And this is going to blow your mind. And I'm about to wonder why Mr. A.D. here is using this word. And you'll find out in a minute. And I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, everybody's got their thoughts and theories on this guy. And unfortunately, somehow, he is maintained to come back. And he's a bit bitter, as you would say, bitter, sounds like in his video. I don't know how he was able to record something. Of course, he's going to use a um, movie scene, mind you. Uh, oh, anyways, yeah, wife is in and out, getting ready to do her teeth and stuff, um, but... What are you doing over there? It's the squirrels is out. But anyways, as I was saying about the wording and stuff, and, uh, what are you doing up there? And what I found out of what this guy could be doing with wording, <laughs> oh, snuffed out. I and mean, that's why I wanted to know if anybody out in London he still uses the term snuff. I mean, yes, I do know it's murder and everything. It's just the fact that how, how many and how many times does people use it today? That's what I wanted to know. Because when I seen this, you know, I do know what it means. But it just, it um just baffled me a bit. You know, to say, why, why is he using this word? You know, and, and like I said with the dictionary and the old wording, I have a bunch of stuff that I wasn't understanding, so I had that dictionary brought in, I written down so I could put into my short stories when I did use them, because I, I think I used them in a couple short stories. I wrote horror stories, and I used words from back in the day, you know, and when I like the definition of it, put it in the story. So that being said, and thinking, wow, snuff being used. I was thinking, hmm, you know, what, 
What would cause him to use that word, right? He's all about talking about murder and killing. And then he's all about snuffing. And then, like I said, what was I saying? That, yeah, that he's back on YouTube. All the Russell Crowe movie. So he's over here using the Russell Crowe movie as his, yeah, wanting to be Mr. Battle Tyrion. Thinking he's going to destroy everybody like Russell Crowe was in the movie. So if you watch the movie, you know, you, you see the Russell Crowe battling away. And, um... So anyways, as we have an uh, armchair detective here acting like a massive warrior in battle because he's feeling now very, very... How can I say it? Ah, uh, what was that word I was using? These bitter. Very bitter. Don't seem too happy. So he's using this warrior movie to bring forth stuff against people that has brought him down. But looking into this, and like I said, the wording. And get this, now this is the kick of it all. Now, before I get into my next subject on this snuffed word, I'm very excited that um, I had watched the, this movie last night on YouTube for free. Got a couple more i seen come up, but it's been kicking around. I haven't had time to watch it. Last night, it, you know, popped up again. And wouldn't you know, out of everything I... You know, kept looking at and said, I gotta watch that. Gotta watch it. Something's telling me to watch it. It keeps coming up. I can feel it. And I'm like, I gotta, you know what? I gotta watch it. And, um, first of all, I like to say before I say anything that in my videos, when I do speak of murderers, killers, psychopaths, you know, serial killers. And I I want to say this is where I got it from. I, but I can't say that. But I want to. And in, in order to, as one... Now whether or not this was fiction, non-fiction. You know, I always think it was real. Because you don't just come up with cases like this and ideas like this if it wasn't real. And who other than, and I, it's got to be what I was thinking of. And one I did say in quite a few videos, and there's a detective that I remember saying, and I kept saying a very good detective, you know? In order to catch a killer, you have to think like a killer. And wouldn't you know, and I'm going to be putting this in a very short clipped video of, um, of who said it. I got away with, uh, the, um, putting in a clip of a lumbotomy being done and the explanation and that was in the uh, Francis Farmer movie. I just recorded a small clip, put it up on YouTube. I never got tagged for, you know, copywriting. And because this came up last night in this movie, like I said, being drawn to it, just, I gotta watch it. I gotta watch it. And finally, I watched it last night. And wouldn't you know, and I'm gonna put that clip up. Of what he says about catching a killer. And it would only be right to say that I said a great detective one time said this. And that is. And I'm going to say, I'm just going to say I had to have seen it from this, you know, movie. And um, when I was younger, I used to watch him. And I'm going to bring him up in a minute. And what a great way to keep people in suspense. <laughs> keep talking about that person. Learned well from the great one. 
And as I was a kid, you know, I didn't understand just like it is, the wording. Now, I got the, you know, when it all ended up coming out in the end and watching the movie, as a kid now, now I was like seven, eight years old when I used to watch these movies. And just trying to figure out what they were talking about. And I could say this is probably where I learned snuff from, too. But... I mean, I've heard it numerous times from people in old movies or whatever the case may be. When I was a kid, I used to watch a lot of TV. And, uh... I'm sure my little man's over there. And, like I say, you just... It, it's just crazy how it comes up later on in life. And it's not like I forgot about this man or this movie or this... Brilliant masterpiece theater, I'll call it. Masterpiece. Brilliance. But it all <laughs> levels down to where Mr. A.D. might be getting his trying to be armchair detective, right? But I always, in my eyes, remember... Can, I can take reality and fantasy and, you know, right, make wind of what is real. Obviously, this guy can't. That's why he's now bitter of what has happened to him. Even though he is back on the air, and that's sad to say. But all in all, watching this when I was a kid, learning about things... And I'm deeply dedicated and obsessed with mystery. Whether it be from Scooby-Doo Mysteries, even though them were kid shows, they came out with good plots on how a mystery and how, to, how they solved it. You know, it was great. It was great. How to capture the bad guy to catch who's doing the wrong. And who better yet, though... And also, like I said, I used to watch Nancy Drew. Used to love Nancy Drew mysteries. Even though I couldn't understand some of the words in the book, I'd read like hell and try to. And then there was this one. Drum roll, please. I don't have no drums. <laughs> but, let's get into it. Of course, anybody knows that cursive writing is out of schools nowadays. But this is perfectly um, tasteful, charming, British handwriting. No, English, sorry. English handwriting. Sherlock Holmes, I gotta remember, was English. And Sherlock Holmes it is. Huh? Now in this movie... Oh, man. I advise everybody to watch it. Now it got me thinking about this man and what other thoughts and theories he uses. Because remember the video before he came out with it I put up a video of Dr. Phil, and it came up again yesterday or the day before. Dr. Phil talking about his podcast, Murder and Mystery, Murder Mystery, and going into the mind of Chris Watts. Now you got Mr. Armchair Detective with one of his videos after this, and it's all dated. My videos are dated in all the, um, the, um, friggin', you know, that ah, yeah, that brain fart. The Dr. Phil video came up, and then a day or two later, Mr. Armchair Detective. Oh, it's all on Peyton, and I'm gonna go into the mind of Chris Watts. Oh, what are you gonna do? Now this got me thinking. He's gonna go into the mind. 
bear with me. So really, really uh, interruption there. So as I was saying, here we have Dr. Phil going in the minds of Chris Watts. Then this guy going to go in the mind of Chris Watts. Then it got me thinking, bang, when I saw this movie right here. All came in like a flood busted dam. <laughs> dam flooding. In this movie. In this movie. Which I believe I've been seeing this streaming, you know, free movies. I want to say uh, about last week it came up and I've been, you know, delaying it. Delaying it. Just say, I'm going to watch that one day. And now that I have. And now after the fact that Dr. Phil says. Right? We're going to go into the mind of Chris Watts. Oh, I'm Chair Detective now. is going to go into the mind of Chris Watts. What is he going to use of Dr. Phil's info? Right? On the mind of Chris Watts. Everybody knows he takes credit for stuff. I've got comments after comments of what this man does. Now, in this movie, and this is from 1939. Not only did I hear the armchair detective say, I'm going to go into the mind of Chris Watts. But you have to go to patron, patron, or whatever the f, f it is, stupid patron, just to find out what I got, what he's got. Mm hmm. Was Marilyn Monroe snuffed? She was snuffed out, was she? And I'm gonna do a little movie clip. Of this. Because Mr. Sherlock Holmes, people, talks about mm, this, not this guy, but a guy, this guy is the best friends with his uncle, I believe it was. And this guy with the glasses was worried about the um, nephew coming in because he's inherited his um, uncle's, uh, I want to say chateau, but it ain't a chateau, it's something else to haul, something haul. And just before Sherlock Holmes leaves and jumps back on the train to go back to London, uh, he takes another train back. And before that scene, and when he comes back, there's two times, two times, he uses the word snuffed. Someone snuffed him out. Someone's going to snuff him out. I was like, oh, shit. And that's what I want to say. And that's why I came up with asking anybody in London if the term snuffed is still used. Because as you can see, before I said anything, I'm talking about words that ain't used no more. And when I saw this, it's the first thing that came to mind. I don't remember that word being used. Where's this guy getting snuffed from? Why ain't he just saying murdered, killed? No, did he get that from the best? Hmm? Just like Chris Watts, his mind's going to be examined by the best. So it's going to be funny. Well, it's not going to be funny. It's going to be interesting. Sorry, let me rephrase that. It's going to be very interesting to watch another Sherlock Holmes movie. Deep from the Boroughs of Scotland Yard to see what else Mr. Armchair Detective uses in his wording. Hmm? 
very interesting to see because that's when you know a man is fake. You gotta come out with stuff that's coming out before yours. And that's two times I caught him. Hmm? <laughs> that's right. You ain't gotta be an armchair detective to know this. You gotta have a mind of a maniac. You have to have a mind of a murderer. And my man here, right there, Mr. Sherlock Holmes will tell you that. In this movie, and I'm going to put it up in a short clip. And there's another thing in this movie that I'm excited to talk about. And also in this movie, and also in my videos, I talk about people who look like someone. And I think it's got to do, do with the fact that caveman, when caveman emerged, and they weren't too bright. They weren't the brightest tools in the shed, the sharpest tool in the, to, you know, tool in the shed. The sharpest tool in the, in the ten, utensil drawer. They did what they did, and that was that. And I think that, unfortunately, they didn't know about inbreeding, And they inbreeded. And so forth. So if you happen to see someone you may know, a family member, I know I have people out there that say I got a twin. Nothing you can do about it. Because the genetics back in the day of non formed brains, unfortunately, led us to have a look alike. And I know I've seen my share of people who look like someone. And that was something that amazed me in this movie. Because it don't cross my mind to think about, ooh, the killer looks like somebody and it ain't him. Of course, everybody got to, and that's good that we have our own unetic, unique DNA. Because if someone look like you, you have the same DNA, same look alike, well, pfft, now you up shit's creek. But it's good. But in this movie, Proves my thoughts and theories too. It was awesome. And like I say, there's that chance you're gonna see someone that looks like somebody. And I always say it always crosses my mind. I'm always looking at a face just to see if it looks like somebody I know or seen or you know, it's something I like to do. I'm not a friggin' weirdo. Just stare at you, say, hey, what are you doing over there? No, I'm studying your face. And this right here, my friends, will... <laughs> it's going to be another short clip. Should I keep you in suspense and let you sh see what Mr. Sherlock Holmes does? I don't know. Yes. Yes, I will. And it's something that I've always had a very strong mind of um, thoughts about. And I will leave that in another video so you can see what he does. Because a lot of times, man, that I do this and think about this, it's like, and then he does it. And it's very, very interesting. And it was very, very awesome to see. And it is something that you might want to keep your eye open for when you see a replica, replica video of it being done by someone who's fake. <laughs> That's right. Get it? How many videos are um, done and thought of and put together due to this man's brilliance? To this, whether it is true or not true. Whoever wrote these stories was a, a brilliant, intelligent man. Whether they're stories from secretly from Scotland Yard, true stories. Um, just put into there because you know they didn't want no one knowing about something or whatnot. But 
What better way to put it in a movie? They want no further investigation or something getting, you know, conspiracy theory on it. But whatever the case may be, this right here is the show to watch, especially if you want to make up stuff and claim it yours. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But a couple movie clips I'm going to do soon. One of my thoughts and theories. Something that blew in my mind like a dam exploding with a huge wave of water. That, what is that man really doing? With stuff like this. To this. Snuffed. Taking other stuff is right. So, do that next video be safe, take care. Very interested in, oh, I'm very can't wait. I'm mean, very can't wait. <laughs> I just can't wait to get to the next Sherlock Holmes movie. And see what other words come out. Till that next video, be safe, take care. Always beware. That's right. Who's making stuff up? Is right out.